Yo guys, hello and welcome back to the Red Top Mini Project series. This is episode number three. Um, as I'm sure you will agree, things look quite different from the, the previous episode. We've actually uh, chopped off the, the front end. We've, um, we've done that by going straight down a roughly about, I'm going to say, two and a half, three inches in front of the bracket uh, mounting for the, the top of the front shocks um, and then just kind of gone up and along the top of the uh, the, the wing. Um, this is the correct way to do it. I've seen lots of people do it in a, this very similar fashion and um, at the moment it's very rough but I will kind of knead it up a little bit as the project furthers. I've then began neatening up the previous owner's kind of bodge and I've bodged it forever and made it look a bit better um, by the time I underseal this thing all this will kind of disguise. I then began taking off the outer seal. I started doing this because I noticed there was quite a lot of rust on it and um, there were several places where it kind of gone all the way through so I began chopping things out and it just got to a stage in which I thought you know what I'm just going to replace the whole seal. It's not worth just mix and matching and patching this part in when I can just so easily get a replace my part. You can see right now I've kind of done a few little repairs on there. I've got one more left to do there. Um, I've got one little one to finish off neaten up at the back. I'll get that bit done today. I then want to put the outer sill on. Um, I'm also going to attempt to under seal this section of the car because at the moment I've only been working on this higher higher end. Um, it's, it's rolled on the side purely just so it's easier to work on. When I was having to work underneath like the car, it really wasn't going well. The welding was absolutely shocking, even more shocking than what it, what it looks like now. Um, so yeah, get it up on its side, got it on a mattress so it doesn't damage it too much. Um, much easier to work when you're kind of in front of your face. Got this little hole here to repair, so I'll get that done. And then, yeah, like I mentioned, I'm going to attempt underseeing. I've never undersealed anything in my entire life. I've uh, just bought the gun, I've got that, and uh, like a tin of underseal that kind of just plugs into it. And I'm just going to go for it. I've got the mask and all, etc. So we can see how that goes. But I think without further ado, let's crack on and um, get these little bits repaired. So something else that's happened within the last few days is I've actually managed to source my uh, C20 XE engine. Um, as you can see, here it is. Um, this radiator kind of looks a bit naff. Won't be using this one because it is quite big and I believe we can use uh, just a normal coarser one. So, and that's about half the size. So I'm really pleased with this. Uh, when we turned up to the guy's house to look at it, he had it all plumbed in, like all this rad and the heater matrix, everything is all still plumbed in, all the liquids still inside it. He then had a full exhaust system all on this and um, had it on an engine crane. It literally just click, clicked it up to a, uh, a battery and away it went. It, it started up absolutely amazingly. The thing purred. It didn't rattle or anything, so I'm really, really uber excited about this. Um, this is another vital component in the Red Top Mini project because this is the Red Top. Uh, gonna kind of tart it up, paint it up, and uh, just get it looking real nice, and um, yeah, then move on to the next step. I think next week we've got the subframe, the drive shafts, and the custom CV joints all turning up. So things are looking promising, guys. Uh, really, really excited, and. Um, things are going the right way, which is awesome. Right then guys, so as you can see, the, the outer sill is now all on, fully welded um, around the, uh, the seam and the bottom edge there. Lots of people just tack these things on, but I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna weld all the way along um, just to give it a bit of added strength. I have then undersealed the whole car. Um, at a later stage when I underseal the other side, I will kind of give you a bit of a how-to on how I've done it. Uh, I didn't want to today because it was only my first time, so I didn't really want to be kind of teaching you something that I didn't really know myself. But overall, I am really, really, really pleased with it. Um, I'm going to come take a bit of a step back and try and show you guys the full effect of uh, how she looks. I'm really pleased with it. I think that looks absolutely fabulous. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of the few of the lines where, the, uh, where I've had to weld it up. But overall, it covers so much and I think it looks absolutely epic. It is now the next day from yesterday. 
Um, as you can see, <coughs> the car is has been rolled the opposite way. So I've finished all the welding. I welded this patch in here. I welded in the new outer seals, a couple of patches up here, and uh, a bit towards the back. Um, the reason why I've got the mask on is one, because I've got the microphone inside, but two, because it's been a very dusty job. I've had to prep the area, because what we're going to do is we're going to underseal the car today. Um, I've already done the lower half, which I showed you previously, and um, so now we're on the top. So first things first, what you want to do is you want to remove any sort of debris or any sort of dirt or anything that's actually on the vehicle already. So you can kind of see the surface all looks like this. I've uh, used a grinder which had a, a wire wall disc on it and then for anything that won't or can't be moved I've used a, a grinder on its own. The, uh, the next step that you want to do, you want to ensure that everything is as you want it. You want to make sure all your weld is to a standard in which you like but having said that it is also important to remember that the under seal is very thick and you can do a couple of layers of this and it will cover most things so once we've done that we then want to look at these holes now these are i believe them to be drainage holes on the minis um, what i need to do is i need to back them so i'm going to get a bit of tape and just put it on the other side the reason for that is because when i'm under sealing i don't want it all to go in and start spraying on things inside the car we then come to the underseal itself. Now I went to a place called Machine Mart. This stuff's all over the place. And just look for anything that says underbody sealant spray. And you get it in a can like this. Once you've got this, you can get your gun. Now this is the gun. This screws into the, uh, the bottle like so, plugs onto the airline, and then I just blast it on. So I think without further ado, let me just get all this stuff sorted and we'll crack on with it. So once we feel like we are ready to begin the job, we take our underseal, we must shake this vigorously for a couple of minutes. I've already been shaking this one for a while. So we can get ready to crack on. We then take the cap off, give it a little wiggle. And you wanna keep hold of this cap because if you don't use the whole tin up, you can reseal it. We then, pull the ring cap off and there's another metal seal inside I kind of just get this and jab it through and we must screw this on tight lovely stuff and now before we connect the gun to the airline it is vital to remember you have a mask and some sort of eye protection on. This stuff is extremely potent and um, it will damage all those sorts of areas if it can get in. Right then, so we connect our airline up. And now the best places to start are the areas that are kind of in little gaps and things. The reason for that is so we don't overdo them at a later date. If you're doing a massive area and then have to start focusing on a gap up there, you're going to get a huge sort of build up and run. So when you're ready to start, we can begin going around the edges. Now I'm going to use this bit of card just to, just to stop any overspray going on the rest of the car because this stuff is very thick and squidgy and will be a pain to have to rub off anywhere. And now instantly, that one little squirt, I can already smell this stuff. It, like I said, it's very potent. So don't do massive bursts. Just kind of, just gently layer it up. Just little squeezes of the trigger is more than ample enough. Try not to go over anything else that we don't want to cover. So now I'm going to get up in these gaps. Getting in any sort of recesses. I've got a little bit down here I want to do. And I like to go around the edges first because I find this to be the, uh, the neatest way but if you do get this on the rest of the car, you want to get it off before it starts drying. This uh, specific 
stuff takes about two hours to dry, but I've experienced it to take slightly longer. It all depends on how thick you put it on. The emphasis is really on trying to cover as much as possible. So you really want to make sure you are getting it on all those little gaps before you start doing the, the major part of the job. If you feel like you're going a bit lightheaded at all, then it is vital to put down the tools and go outside immediately. This stuff is, uh, is very strong. You want to keep like a steady pressure up with the air flow coming in so you can ensure a good blast of chemicals. So once we feel like we're almost there, you want to double check everything you've done, remembering not to touch it obviously with your hands, um, and then just try and find anywhere that's slightly thin just so you can build it up. This stuff is actually quite enjoyable to, uh, to put on. As long as you have got the right apparatus, making sure you're not getting blinded or ruining your lungs. And that's the end of that can, so it's taken me about two cans to cover this whole bottom area, like ha, one can per side. It's really good stuff. Now it's important to remember that your job isn't over now you've finished spraying. It's, it's vital that you clean the gun. The way I do this is I take the, take this off, I leave it connected to the airline at all times, and then you'll see that your tube there will be covered so I kind of run it up the edges a bit just to get most of the excess off what I'll then do is I'll take a cloth and I'll wipe that off and then for the finale I get some thinners in a bottle put it inside and I spray it through clean the pipe again do that again I'll do that two or maybe three times until what this is spraying out is just purely clear don't spray it onto the car because you will be spraying white spirit or thinners out onto the car which will destroy your undersill. Do it onto another surface away from this area. Right then guys, so I hope you found this video interesting and awesome. As you can see the car is coming along in leaps and bounds. Um, I think in maybe one month from we should be on the road. I'm really really excited about this and uh, I hope you are too. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!